Could there be some potential changes within the Denver Broncos front office this offseason? Not the changes that some people in Broncos country anticipate. We'll break it all down and we'll preview Wild Card Week on the AFC and NFC side on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Unfortunately, the Denver Broncos will not be participating in this weekend's slate of NFL playoff games. We'll still share our thoughts, preview each matchup, and share our thoughts and our picks on that. We want you to follow along on today's brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much once again to everybody in Broncos country and all the everydayers out there who make us your first listen of the day every single day. You can get this podcast for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast, We appreciate you so much for rocking with us every single day, all year long, all throughout the offseason, because for the true fan, there is never an offseason. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside by Sarah Benninger, site expert, predominantly orange.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. Sarah, before we dive into the AFC and NFC wildcard game, sharing our thoughts on the matchups, some of the storylines, and maybe just how there might be a little bit of a ripple effect maybe going into 2024, how it impacts the Broncos in some way, shape, or form. There is obviously some things we'll break down here about the Broncos on today's episode is there could be some potential front office changes. Not necessarily, by the way, I think a lot of Broncos fans were thinking, okay, hey, the Broncos are going to fire several people. I don't think that's you know going to be the case. I don't think that was ever the reality. But some of Denver's front office executives have received some interview request from other teams for some vacant GM jobs around the National Football League. So there could be some changes coming up within the front office structure. There could very well be, right? And obviously one of the most prominent bits of news that has come out in the last day or so is that Kelly Klein, who's been in the Broncos front office now for a couple of years, she has a, a chance to get a GM job and, and she's interviewed with the Las Vegas Raiders, unfortunately, Cody. I mean, what a, what a milestone moment, first of all, for her to interview there in the first place. I mean, uh, awesome work by her just climbing up through the ranks. Uh, I know that she's she's obviously really trusted by George Payton, dating back to their time in Minnesota with the Vikings together, a real eye for talent in the front office. And I think, I mean, worthy of being interviewed across the league for GM positions. We knew this was a possibility when she got hired by Denver, that she could eventually get hired by somebody as a general manager, which would make her obviously the first you know, female GM in football, which is amazing. So th the fact that she could come out of the ranks of, of Denver's front office is very, very cool. And, and I think unfor just unfortunate that it has to be the Raiders. I mean, Kelly, come on. You, you, there's got to be somebody else out there. But no, I, in all seriousness, congratulations to, to her and the work that she's been putting in, Cody. And I think people may be wondering, you know, with the, the new rules that the NFL has in place, like as historic of a moment as that would be, I mean, the Broncos would benefit from it being that, you know, she qualifies as a minority candidate that they would get multiple third round draft selections, compensatory picks if she were to get hired in that capacity. So fascinating potential development, not just for the, you know, Kelly Klein and the Broncos, but the NFL. I mean, what a big thing that would be. And for her to step into that role, I don't think there's anybody more deserving for sure. She has, I mean, her background in the scouting side of things, Sarah, has been very impressive. I've had the chance to talk to Kelly a few times. She's got a very, very bright football mind. She loves Peaky Blinders, which is fantastic. Great show, by the way. For those of you who haven't watched that on Netflix, make sure you check it out. But, you know, for Kelly, I just think her experience in the scouting side of things, and that's something that's a big reason why she's an advisor to George Payton. Like, George has a lot of trust in her. And I think when we talk about women in sports, it's a conversation that unfortunately, you know, a lot of women get overlooked in the sports, sports media, sports administration, whatever you may have for opportunities. Kelly is so qualified to do a lot of these jobs. She's been in a front office setting, dating back to her time with the Minnesota Vikings, with George Payton and with Rick Spielman, who obviously is a very, very trusted name inside the community. He's being part of the, I think it's the Washington Commanders head coaching search right now as they're going through there. Josh Harris put together a little bit of a team there and Rick's going to help out with that. But for for Kelly, I think this is a very interesting opportunity, right? And and I I hate seeing the comments that oh well you know this should happen so Denver gets a draft pick. Like 
I think that's the wrong way of thinking for some people. Like obviously compensation in the draft is great, but if you're doing it under the lens of, well, Hey, just because she's a girl, she should get hired. So we should get a draft pick. No, she should get hired because she's qualified for the job. And Kelly is very, very qualified. She had a chance to take part in the NFL's accelerator program. Obviously back in December, um, she was selected and nominated by the Broncos organization and also vetted through a, a different like selection process there. And she got to intermingle a little bit with some of the top NFL executives across the all 32 teams, ownership groups, things like that. And her knowledge of football, her ability, I think, not only just to scout and understand the game, but her ability to make connections with players is super important. Because if you are going to be in the side of your building personnel, you're assembling a roster, you as a GM have to be able to connect to your players. You have to be able to level with them. And Kelly is one of the best that I've seen so far in, in terms of a, a woman who's on the rise here in professional sports. Very excited for her opportunity here. And hey, I, I hope she gets a job because she is very damn good at what she does. She's very well respected inside the Broncos organization and inside the facility. And she's got a lot of respect from a lot of people around the National Football League. Now, this kind of brings me to another point as well, right? You know, a name that we anticipated at some point would probably get some interest. We haven't seen anything official yet, but I would not be surprised as well, Sarah, if Darren Muji gets an opportunity as assistant GM to George Payton, if he gets an opportunity to get interviews as well during this cycle. Some teams are moving very quickly with their process, so I don't know if this cycle will necessarily be the most fruitful for maybe Muji to get interviewed, depending on you know if there's even more widespread changes as we've seen across the NFL. It's been a crazy week here so far in terms of head coaches being let go, some changes to some organizations and structures of front offices, but definitely another name to keep an eye on here if you're a member in Broncos country. Absolutely. I mean, he's been the right-hand man for George Payton. He's been around for quite a while in Denver behind the scenes doing things that a lot of people don't see. I mean, had a few featured parts on the behind the Broncos back when those were still happening. So we've gotten to see a little bit of what he does and the the boots on the ground that he put that that type of work that you know those front office guys put in throughout the year. That's just that's just insane, Cody. I mean, I hate airplanes. I can't imagine how those guys feel <laughs> being on them as often as they are. But uh, but oh. yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those off seasons to where there's so much change going on. I mean. You, you kind of weigh the balance of do I want to continue to build up the Rolodex or do I want to stay put and see if we can turn this thing around and get my stock to be a little bit hotter. I mean, I don't think you would turn down the interview opportunities if they came up, but whether or not you you take a job or you take a you know maybe a lateral move or something like that to go to a different organization, I just don't know if the timing is quite right for somebody like Muji. You know, with with where the Broncos are currently at, if they turn this ship completely around and make the playoffs this year, and you see all these different player personnel moves that are going really well, I think then you would see him get a lot of a you know GM offers, not just interviews. I think he'd be getting offers next off season, but. It is. It's supply and demand. There's a lot of demand right now, isn't there? A lot of teams making sweeping changes, including some historic co coaching changes that we've seen in the last couple of days. Dude, this has been a wild NFL offseason. It could still get a little more wilder. I mean, there's some rumors about Andy Reid after the season. He could retire potentially. Could you imagine if that happened? Three new head coaches inside the AFC West. That would be unbelievable. But obviously, Bill Belichick and the, the Patriots parting ways. We never thought we'd ever see that happen. I mean, Pete Carroll was a big surprise. There's Mike Vrabel out in Tennessee. Like, this cycle is going to be crazy, Sarah. And I'm very, very curious to see the ripple effects for these teams. And maybe even at some point how it might impact the Broncos if the Denver has to face a team with a new head coach. And how does it impact a team's perception on what they need in the offseason for free agency or the NFL draft? Could that impact what Denver wants to do strategically? I mean, there's a lot riding on what's going on here. So I'm very, very curious to see how everything formulates throughout the rest of this offseason more anticipated changes could be happening but one thing is for certain we'll have you covered every step of the way here on the locked on broncos podcast we'll keep you updated if there's any personnel moves you can expect all your broncos news and content and conversation here on locked on broncos we're going to shift gears a little bit though we're going to talk about the nfl playoffs now unfortunately the broncos will not be playing in this weekend's slate of games but we're going to take a look at all the afc and nfc wildcard games we're going to share our thoughts our analysis and even share our picks we want you to get involved as well we'll do that here on today's brand new episode locked on broncos today's locked on broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at the game time app and you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event game time is the fast and the easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. 
With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you a complete peace of mind when you make a purchase. You get to see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive at your event. They have all-in prices, which show you your total up front, so you know that you're getting a great deal before you check out, and you can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We're taking a look at the wild card round of the NFL playoffs, putting our Broncos flair on some of these predictions that we're about to make and talking about some of the teams that Denver played throughout the season. How are they going to do now that they're in the playoffs? And unfortunately, the Broncos aren't. We're going to break down these matchups, our predictions, who's going to be moving forward. But before we do, I want to say thank you to every single one of you that makes Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day every single day right here on the Locked On Podcast Network where it is your team every day, free and available anywhere that you listen to podcasts as well as on YouTube where you can sound off in the comments section and engage with other members of Broncos country. Cody and I appreciate every single one of you and tell us your predictions for the wild card round of the NFL playoffs. Some fascinating matchups across the league, but we're going to start in the AFC, of course, uh, maybe the most familiarity that we have with these playoff opponents. The Broncos played a lot of games against playoff teams in 2023, right? They they had a number of matchups. I believe, Cody, if I remember off the top of my head, I think they went four and four against playoff teams that they played against in 2023 so not terrible not the best but they they had opportunities and a couple of these teams that they couldn't take advantage of uh their opportunity against are still playing this weekend let's start out in the afc how about this matchup between the cleveland browns and houston texans for my money maybe the most intriguing matchup of the weekend in the afc who do you got in this game why what are you looking forward to I agree with you that this is the most intriguing one. Now, I'd say if the, the Chiefs-Dolphins game was in Miami, I'd say that might probably be a little bit more of the more intriguing one, but you know, we'll get to that game here in a minute. I, I think for this game in particular between Joe Flacco, former Broncos quarterback who suddenly is now playing in his prime, John Elway wasn't wrong. He was just a few years too early on his prediction about Joe Flacco taking on a young guy in C.J. Stroud, who, I mean, Sarah, I have been blown away by how fast things have come along for the Houston Texans and how good C.J. Stroud has been this season. Look, we, we were watching him in that Broncos game against the Texans, and he was carving up Denver with Nico Collins, and it was, it was frustrating to see because there were times where Denver sent pressure, and he's just he's not flustered. Like Even when there was pressure coming off the blind side there, he would step up into the pocket. Like He's not a guy that's rattled. He's got this different gene in him from a quarterback standpoint that I feel like when people look at C.J. Stroud, and obviously where Denver's in the market for a quarterback, potentially drafting a rookie, I think everyone's going to be thinking, well, this guy's going to play like C.J. Stroud. Now, remember, it used to be Patrick Mahomes was the expectation for all young quarterbacks coming in. Now it's going to change to C.J. a little bit. C.J.'s just built a little different here. Now he's going to face a tough test there with that Cleveland Browns defense led by former Bronco uh, defensive lineman Shelby Harris, obviously in the mix there. That defense has played terrific down there in Cleveland this year. They were a tough challenge for Denver, and all of a sudden Denver was able to run for a buck 69 against them, which was a little bit weird there. But for me, this is an indoor game. We get to see former Bronco Kareem Jackson as well, another tie that binds. I think this will be an entertaining game. I think this could be a high-scoring affair. I'm going to go with the Houston Texans edging out the Cleveland Browns in a shootout here this weekend. What about you? What are your picks, and what are your thoughts on it? I'm just really, really interested to see if the the clock is going to strike midnight on the Joe Flacco thing at some point, right? Because I just don't know. I mean, he's played such a crazy stretch of five games. Like he, he's averaging almost 325 passing yards per game over his five starts with the Cleveland Browns in which they've gone four and one. The only team they lost to was the Los Angeles Rams, who's beaten just about everybody they've played over the last two months. And so I'm fascinated to see how it carries over. Do, uh, does he continue to sling the ball around the yard? And, and if he does that, Cody, I think the Browns are going to win this game pretty easily. I mean, we're talking about the number one defense in the NFL, not just in total yardage, but talking about third down offense or defense as well. They're, they're the best in the league. Pass rush, elite. The defensive backfield in Cleveland is unreal. So 
but I could see the CJ Stroud magic. That's why that's where my 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 heart is being tugged two different ways here. It's like, can can we get the rematch between you know Joe Flacco and the Baltimore Ravens? Can we see him go on the road and play them in, <laughs> in week two of the postseason? Or can CJ Stroud continue to carry this Texans team? They do play with a little bit of fire. I mean, they've been in a lot of close games. He's had to have that clutch drive against the Colts. I mean, if he doesn't make some incredible plays in that game, they're going to lose to the Colts. But that's what he does. He makes those incredible plays. And so I could see this going either way. If the if the Texans stop the run effectively, I think they they have got a really good shot. But it's gonna it's kind of one of those toss up games, isn't it? And when is the clock going to strike midnight on Joe Flacco? Great question. I mean, we could see it in the playoffs or the legend of Joe Flacco could continue. Could you imagine if they made it to the Super Bowl and won it and Joe Flacco? The image we're going to see is him being on a coach, like a standard flight flying coach to go to his tryout. I mean, it would be the most incredible offseason thing ever. I'm with you there. Uh, let's get to the Miami Dolphins, Kansas City Chiefs game now. Unfortunately, gosh, Miami Dolphins were the hottest team at one point in the NFL when we talk about their offense and how good they were playing. And then a string of bad luck. We talk about injuries, losing Jalen Phillips, losing Bradley Chubb, losing, you know, Xavier Howard to an injury. You know, they had a chance to have home, you know, being able to host a home playoff game. Unfortunately, some things didn't fall into their favor. And now they're going to be traveling on the road to take on the Kansas City Chiefs for a game that's anticipated to be minus 21 degrees, Sarah, at kickoff. Really bad conditions down there. And I think I saw a statistic where the Dolphins and two of them, they're 0-10 in like cold weather games. I'm not sure if that's, accurate or not but uh, it's hard to imagine that the Chiefs in, in this situation aren't going to have the advantage knowing that they've played in those conditions they're battle hard into it even though they've been up and down this season is this where we see the Chiefs flip the switch in the postseason because they haven't looked good throughout the entire regular season they've looked like a normal team which has been weird to say with the team led by Patrick Mahomes what's your pick how do you see this one going well, my hope is obviously that the Dolphins win this game. You know, I think that they can run the ball well enough to be able to grind out a victory in a, you know, cold weather situation. But man, how's Tua going to be? He's made way too many mistakes in recent weeks and games that I've watched of the Dolphins, like the game that they played this past weekend against the Bills. Obviously, the game a few weeks back against the Titans, just way, way too many mistakes. And Patrick Mahomes, historically, we know, has played really poorly against Vic Fangio's defenses. And so, I'm just I'm hoping, Cody, that those things hold here in the first round of the playoffs. We want the Chiefs to get out of there as early as possible. Come on, Dolphins, figure it out. Make it happen. Uh, if anyone could do it, it's Mike McDaniel and his, uh, you know, speeches that he's got. We'll see what the Broncos. I'm not the Broncos. We'll see what the Dolphins see. We're still in, thinking that the Broncos are going to be in the playoffs here. Tyreek Hill, obviously, his return to Kansas City is going to be a very interesting one. Last AFC game stretch that we'll break down here. The Pittsburgh Steelers, man. Interesting, interesting that they're in the playoffs against the Buffalo Bills team that's been Jekyll and Hyde up and down all throughout the season. I mean, last week, heck, Josh Allen throwing YOLO ball interceptions, which was very, very interesting to say the least in that game against the Dolphins to determine who's going to be the AFC East champion. But the Steelers, obviously, a little bit of resurgence here under obviously Mason Rudolph. Uh, the, I think the bigger question here, I might have the Steelers on actually on upset watch if in fact TJ Watt was fully healthy we know he suffered a knee injury in, a, in that week 18 game unfortunately you don't like to see that stuff happen there but for me I just think Buffalo is going to hold on I think Buffalo is going to win this one it's going to be on the east coast and uh yeah, well I mean the Steelers play there as well so that's not really a valid excuse by me but I just think that the Bills have a little bit too much firepower here though if I'm not mistaken I think Gabe Davis is going to be banged up so how does that happen that's one of Josh Allen's favorite playoff targets when we get to the postseason. So I got the Bills winning this one. Who do you got? Yeah, I think the Bills are kind of the team of destiny in the AFC right now. I mean, ever since that game against the Denver Broncos, they haven't lost. So that's kind of crazy to think back to. At that point, they were like the 11th seed in the AFC or something like that. And definitely on the outside looking in. And now they've been on a win streak and it feels like they can't like they just can't find ways to lose. You talk about Josh Allen throwing up the YOLO ball. They just keep finding ways to win games somehow, some way. And I think that they're kind of the team of destiny on the AFC side. I'm excited to talk about my team of destiny on the NFC side, Cody, because it feels like there's just some teams that's like predetermined, almost like the script says this team's winning. The Bills, I think they're going to get an easy win against the Steelers, and we'll see what happens in round two. 
Well, there's going to be some interesting matchups as well, not only on the AFC side, but the NFC side. We'll share our thoughts on the three NFC wildcard weekend playoff games, and we'll share our picks as well. And just as a reminder, if you're following along, you can do the same thing. We want to hear from you, your thoughts on NFL wildcard weekend. It's a fun time. We'll do that here on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's Locked On Broncos is brought to you by Jace Medical. I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of life, but can we just talk about preparing for life for a real minute here? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics, and that's a scary thing. And I can't imagine a, a more helpless feeling if you need antibiotics and you run out due to a, sh a supply shortage or if your kids got sick while a supply chain issue kept them from life-saving medication that they may potentially need. Thankfully, Jace Medical has some solutions for you. The Jace case, it's a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, and among other stuff, they have a variety of different options for things that could arise in your life. So visit Jace Medical and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use the offer code locked on to get $20 off your order. Once again, go to jacemedical.com and use offer code locked on to get $20 off your order. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Locked On Broncos, our wild card week and preview. Make sure if you're also interested in what's going on with some of the teams playing this week, can you check out the local Locked On podcast? respectively, for all the teams playing in Wild Card Weekend. Unfortunately, the Broncos will not be playing in Wild Card Weekend, but we wanted to share our thoughts on all the games that are coming up here this week. And the NFC features a variety of interesting games, and I feel like probably more exciting variety here. I mean, starting things off, the Green Bay Packers on the road taking on the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cowboys, as we've seen this season, they have one of the best offenses at home. They're very good at home. They're hard to beat. They have a very good defense led by Dan Quinn, who was in consideration at one point for the Broncos head coaching job. And you look at this matchup between these two teams, it's crazy to see how far the Green Bay Packers have come, right? Because they were struggling early on. The Broncos beat them. And that really kind of helped jumpstart their win streak that they had at one point of the season. And then all of a sudden they started piecing together win, like a big win after big win for themselves. And all of a sudden we start to think back like, Hey, remember everyone's like, Oh, well you only beat the green Bay Packers. And it's like, Hey, maybe that Packers win is actually big for the Broncos going forward. And unfortunately it didn't work out for Denver because they couldn't take care of business in a couple of games. They should have down the stretch to get in the postseason. but Packers Cowboys, this could be a very interesting matchup. Jordan loves playing some pretty damn good football right now for the pack. It's been kind of impressive on the outside, watching him make some changes and all of a sudden having a lot of success there in green Bay. But Get to go against Micah Parsons and the Cowboys. What's your pick in this game here, Sarah? You get any uh, 2014 Broncos vibes from the 2024 Dallas Cowboys, Cody? I mean, you got a head coach that a lot of people don't really like or don't really see him as the best possible head coach that you could have. You got a defensive coordinator who's supposedly going to be getting a head coaching job here very soon, just like Jack Del Rio was at the time for the Denver Broncos. And and then, you know, just all these different things that played into a really good team ultimately getting bounced early in the playoffs because they lacked a little bit of focus. And Cowboys are very banged up right now. Stephon Gilmore are going to be playing this game in a sling. No Trevon Diggs. I got the Packers on upset alert big time. I think they're one of the most talented rosters in the entire NFL. I, I'm with you. Jordan Love is playing some great football this season. And it's just a it's it's volatile enough for me to say that I wouldn't go bet money on the Packers, but he's been good enough. 34 total touchdowns this season, his first year as a starter for me to say, I think they can go into Dallas and get a win. They have so many weapons on that Packers team. I mean, Bo Melton had a hundred yard receiving game for them. Dontavian <laughs> Wicks had a breakout rookie year. I mean, Christian Watson's supposed to be playing. Luke Musgrave is back. I really like the Packers in this game, Cody, especially if their defense can play up to its fullest potential. And they got a shot to beat Dallas in pretty handily, I think. So I wouldn't be surprised if Green Bay goes and gets a win. Did you see that video of Jair Alexander going up to the reporter who is doing her shot outside the stadium because of, for playoff tickets? He's yes. like, pack his back. She thought he was a fan. Jair might be <laughs> one of the funniest dudes I've ever seen in the NFL. I yeah. love Jair Alexander. Dude is absolutely hilarious. I think this could be a game. Remember, and before the season, Dak Prescott said, I'm not going to throw 10 interceptions, right? He threw eight during the regular season. 
He may throw two in this game here. That's my bold prediction. I'm with you. Upset watch. I've got the Packers going in and obviously beating the Cowboys on the road. And then you're going to have the fluster of all the offseason craziness where, hey, Mike McCarthy could be fired if they do lose. Dan Quinn could go back to Seattle to be the head coach here. Like, there's a lot of things that are very interesting to watch here as we talk about this game in specific. Uh, probably the one game I'm the most intrigued to see about the Los Angeles Rams on the road at the Detroit Lions. You have Matthew Stafford going to the house that he had built. And then you got Jared Goff taking on his former team as well that discarded him. Like These are two pretty damn good football teams between the Rams, between the Lions. I'm excited about this. We get to see the Lions in football action, like with, led by Dan Campbell. It, what type of team are we going to see in the Lions' first playoff game? And gosh knows how long. I know it's going to be packed. It's going to be rowdy. Uh, for me, I think the Detroit Lions, MCDC, I think they're going to get the win at home. And I think it's going to be probably the most entertaining game of the weekend if I had to give a prediction here. Yeah, the Detroit Lions are really my team of destiny on the NFC side. But here's where the unstoppable force meets the immovable object in the playoffs. because. The Detroit Lions feel kind of like a team of destiny, but the Los Angeles Rams are the hottest team in the NFL. I mean, they've won, what, six of their last seven, seven of their last eight, something like that. They are red hot, and I don't know how you bet against a team necessarily that's got a Super Bowl winning head coach and quarterback. You got Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, who's had a tremendous rookie season. Aaron Donald on the other side. I mean, those Rams are going to be a lot to handle in the playoffs, but I do think Detroit has what it takes to hang with them in a shootout style of game. I don't think either of these two teams inspire a ton of confidence defensively, but I think the Lions, Cody, I'm riding the Detroit Lions all the way to at least the NFC Championship game, if not further here. I think they're the team of destiny in the NFC. Oh, I like that. I was thinking of Tenacious D when you said something about destiny. We'll see if that's the case here when these two teams match up this weekend. And it's super weird to me, the final game of the NFC playoff slate that there's a wild card game on a Monday night, right? It's just so weird to me considering that, okay, hey, you're going to play on Monday. Now it's like whoever wins, like depending on how the game goes, you have, to, you have to be able to get ready for maybe potentially obviously the next Sunday or even Saturday of next week for the divisional round. To me, that's a little interesting. But the Philadelphia Eagles, who at one point were the hottest team inside the NFC, sitting atop of the one seed, really in control of being able to run away with it, all of a sudden pissed down their leg. like they pissed away their opportunity and now all of a sudden they're finding themselves in a playoff game where they have to go on the road to take on Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to me this has all the makings of a complete collapse that could see Nick Sirianni a year after making it to the Super Bowl fired by the Eagles I would not be shocked especially with Bill Belichick being available here can Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans, can that Tampa Bay team find some semblance of offense against this defense that has struggled? Like early on in the season, the Eagles defense was playing really good. Then it's got to the point where they struggled so bad that they moved away from Sean Desai being the play caller to Matt Patricia, and the defense has gotten worse in his regard. Tampa Bay, playoff game at home, way Philly's been playing. I've got Tampa Bay beating the Eagles in this game. I do too. I think that there was a bit of fool's gold with that 10 and one start from the Eagles. I mean, I, I look back even back to September, they Lapse. played a game against the Minnesota Vikings and, and you just, you could feel that there was something very different about this Eagles team. They're not running the ball as effectively. Maybe they let the two best coaches in the building out the door and Shane Steichen, who did an incredible job with the Colts. And I think Jonathan Gannon did an awesome job with the Arizona Cardinals, even though they only won four games. So maybe the best coaches got let out the front door of that organization. And you make a great point. The presence of Bill Belichick on the coaching market really shifts the way I think that teams will perceive their current head coach because, hey, if you feel like you're a contender, you might want to get that guy to lead the charge. And so I have the Buccaneers winning as well. Baker Mayfield mania going to go out there, a little Oklahoma on Oklahoma disrespect here at the quarterback <laughs> position for these two teams. But I think Baker... He's going to get the job done, increase his free agent value. The Bucs just have such a good defense still, which is why I never bought the idea that they could be the worst team in the league this year, like yeah. a lot of people thought going into the season. Their defense is still good. They got playmakers. And if Baker shows up, man, that team is going to be tough to beat. Now, Antoine Winfield Jr. is playing really well on the back end of that secondary right now as well. I, I'm excited for these slate of playoff games. I'm sure, folks, we'll be live tweeting, live threading it all throughout the weekend if you want to get in the conversation with Sarah and myself as we get to sit down and enjoy a whole weekend of 
freaking football, baby. This is what it's all about. Now, it'd be different if the Broncos were playing. I think it'd be a lot more exciting, and hopefully Broncos country, the team can get back to that next season or here in the near future because it's been so long since the Broncos have played playoff football. But one thing is for certain, we are going to appreciate football while it's still here because then there's going to be a layoff, and then we're going to be wanting football to be back on our television screen. So playoff weekend, it's big. We'll share our thoughts throughout the divisional round, throughout the AFC, NFC championship games, the Super Bowl as well, because you know what? It is football. We get to talk about it. We get to talk about the ties that bind. And with that said, Broncos country, we'll see you on Monday for a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos. As you start diving deeper into our offseason series, we're going to start looking at position reviews. We're going to go back and give our thoughts on who the Broncos offensive, defensive, special teams, rookie of the year, those types of things. We'll open some things up for you to vote on so you can get involved as well. You get that next week on Lockdown Broncos.